Okay, good afternoon artists. I decided to start making a daily art lesson for you so that you don't all get rusty so when we can go back to school you haven't forgotten all of your art skills. This is my little dog Emmy Lou and um, she loves art. That's her favorite thing to do. So I'm going to start out with a classic where the wild things are. If you have been in my art room You've probably already made a wild thing. And all the lessons that I come up with are going to be with very simple supplies that most people have at home. So, and if you don't have the supply that I use, you can substitute crayons, markers, crepe, whatever you want to use, that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter to me what supply you choose to use. Okay? So here we go. Where the Wild Things Are. Written and illustrated by Maurice Sendak. This book is over 29 years old. My oldest son is 29 and someone gave me this when I was pregnant with him so the book has seen better days. Here we go. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another, his mother called him wild thing and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without any supper. And that very night in Max's room, a forest grew and grew and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max. So he sailed off through night and day, and in and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars, they gnashed their terrible teeth, they rolled their terrible eyes, and they showed their Till Max said, be still, and he tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened, and they called him the most wild thing of all. And they made him king of all the wild things. <laughs> And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus begin. Rumpus, rumpus, rumpus. Rumpus, rumpus, rumpus. Rumpus, rumpus, rumpus. Now stop, Max said. And he sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max... The king of all the wild things was lonely and he wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Wait, then all around from far away across the world he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, oh please don't go, we'll eat you up, we love you so. And Max said, no. So the wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. And Max just stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. So now we will make our own wild thing. And I want to show you what the choices are. First of all, if you want to do a larger wild thing, you may. Feel free. I'm doing smaller ones because I, I thought most people would have small paper at home. But you can do it any way you want. Here we have a paint stick wild thing with multiple telescopic eyes, each one a different color. Here we have a rainbow girl, wild thing, she's very, very happy. 
She is always rainbow colored and her hair is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet as well. Here we have, oh, and this is marker. This one is crayon pop. And I did a lot of layering. We've talked about that word in the art room before. When you put one color on top of another and it can make it look more three-dimensional. So this is Fire Girl. Her special power, her superpower is her hair. It is a fire that never burns out, but never catches other things on fire. So she and her whole family work out at Governor Dodge State Park, and they are rangers, and they find lost children and lost pets, and their special power is very helpful at night. Here I have one this crayon. This one is kind of a bull-ish wild thing, and here I did cropping, so part of the bull's face goes right off the page. So this one, I'm going to do colored pencil, because I haven't done a colored pencil one yet. And I am, to help you see, I'll start with pencil, but then I'll use Sharpie and then colored pencil. You can skip the Sharpie step if you want to. It's just to help you see um, what I'm doing. Otherwise, it can be a little tricky. So, this wild thing is... Question Boy. He looks a lot like a question mark, and he is always asking questions. He's very curious. He's always trying to learn. He hates not having school because he doesn't get to learn as much. Now I'm going to go over my pencil with Sharpie to help you see. Here's question boys. Eyebrows, ears. This wild thing is a problem solver because he asks so many questions and he's always trying to learn. He's able to solve a lot of problems, so he uses that superpower to help people. He's also very happy. There he is. Now, I'm going to start coloring, and I'm not worried about whether or not this is perfect. I'm not worried if I stay in the lines. I'm just going to try my best and have fun. Wild things aren't real. They're from Marie Sendak's imagination. So I really don't have to worry about whether it's perfect or looks great. I'm just going to do my best and enjoy myself. Okay. He's got brown eyes. And purple eyebrows and question boy is kind of like a mood ring he changes color depending on his emotions right now he's in a really happy mood so he's orange sometimes when he's sad he's blue but Right now he's in a really happy mood. He loves doing art. It's his favorite subject. So he's a nice bright orange. And what you would do, boys and girls, is just finish up doing your art on your own. You can color in the background. You can make your background a warm color if your art has a lot of cool colors. You can make your background a cool color if your art has a lot of warm colors. There's no way to do this wrong because wild things are imaginary. What I'm going to do now, my friends, is let you finish on your own. I hope you have a great afternoon, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.